This is a presentation of Learfield. Bally Sports Florida and Gator Vision. Lob for the rim. Well, you dunk cone down by Fudge. Yo. Sidearm pass inside. Castleton catches and punched it in with the right hand. Sends it back to Reeves, wing left three. Good, good, good. Up the Florida Kugel. Lob for the rim. Well, you dunk cone down by Fudge. This is Florida Basketball with Todd Golden, presented by your local Toyota dealers. All right, everybody, and welcome into our first episode of the regular season of Florida Basketball with Todd Golden here, joined with the coach, Todd Golden. We have a lot of Gator basketball to talk about. We'll recap the season up until this point. We'll go inside Gator basketball, take a look at Colin Castleton's decision to come back for a fifth year and preview what's ahead. Coach, good to see you. Great to see you as well. Yeah, and for you, year one as Gator head coach, I'm sure coming from the West Coast to the East Coast, you know, coming from San Francisco, it, it, it was a whirlwind when you first got this job. Have you been able to, to settle in yet? Yeah, well, I feel like we're settled in. Uh, I don't know if we stopped a whole lot since we got here, you know, since uh, basically mid-March, I guess. Uh, you know, we feel like we've been moving a, a million miles an hour, but, you know, get into the season, you get in a little better routine. Uh, you know, obviously taking a long trip out to the West Coast with our guys. Now we're back and uh, getting ready for the last game before Christmas and uh, feel like we're in a good spot. In year one, how much have you leaned on your support staff, your assistant coaches, and just what's that relationship been like? Yeah, a lot. You know, <laughs> it's uh, we're, we're having to install a lot. Obviously, you know, we were able to retain six guys, you know, that were here last year, but everybody's new in terms of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to implement on, on both sides of the ball. And so, you know, having my staff has been really, really helpful, and I feel like they've done a really good job so far. And you look at this team right now. We were talking before we, we started recording, but that Ohio game was the best that I think this team's played all year, especially, you know, go to that first half. I think you put up, what, 42 points right. in that first half. You have to feel really good with where this team is at right now. Yeah, you know, we're making progress. Obviously, you know, against UConn, we didn't have the result we wanted, but I thought we played pretty hard and, and we're trying to execute what we wanted to. The two previous games before that, we took care of business. I think we won by a combined, you know, 75, 80 points against those two teams. And then, you know, against Ohio, to be able to run away from them the way we did is, you know, I, I think a, a showing of growth for our group and, you know, that we might be finally clicking and hitting the stride that we expected to at this point in the year. And you look at the chemistry of this team at this moment. As every year now in college basketball, the, the rosters turn over with the transfer portal. So it's hard, even harder now to build that chemistry. How do you think this group has done that? They've, uh, you know, off the court, they're great. You know, I feel like uh, they all like each other. They're guys that enjoy spending time with each other and, uh, and pull for each other on the court. It's taken us a little longer. Uh, simply because we've dealt with a few injuries in our, our rotation, our starting lineups have kind of been in flux. But now we're in a spot where I feel like we're really healthy. And uh, to your point, the Ohio game was a great effort for us. And uh, I'm excited to see what we can do against Oklahoma this coming week. And every single game you want to see some sort of incremental improvement. From that Stony Brook game till now, where have you seen the biggest improvement? Well, really from the first couple games until now, the one area that we were really concerned about with this team was our transition defense. You know, it was something that really, you know, probably cost us the FAU game and uh, the Xavier game as well. And so it, we've made a, a conscious decision to really work at that and change a couple of the things uh, that we do uh, in terms of going to the offensive glass to help us get back defensively. And so that was an area where I feel like we've grown and gotten a lot better these last couple of games. We've been able to keep teams out of transition. And uh, knock on wood, we've been a really good half-court defensive team. And those things specifically, for those that maybe don't know basketball, obviously like you do, but when you want to fix that transition defense, and we talked about this a little bit, is it just the overall numbers you're throwing at the glass? What are some of the specific things that you're doing? Yeah, you know, we've got to work on it. So we got yeah. we spend time in practice on, on really just that transitioning from going to the offensive glass to getting back on, on defense. And, uh, yeah, you know, you, we're generally a team and a program in the past that's put a lot of pressure on the offensive glass. But with this group, you know, we have to find that healthy medium where we're putting pressure but at the same time being able to go back and match up and sort out and not give up rim twos or transition threes so uh, we're, we've kind of given a, a guy another responsibility to get back and load up defensively and it, it's been beneficial for us so far. So a seven and four start through 11 games and those four losses have come against you know pretty good teams you know FAU is going to be a pretty good mid-major team you look at the rest of them you know that that Portland trip the Z Xavier is going to be a really good team West Virginia and of course UConn came in as a, as a top five team did you see any similar trends in those losses that you guys were able to take and learn from? Yeah, you know, I think especially early on, as we talked about, that transition D was an issue against uh, West Virginia and then against UConn. We had some trouble scoring in the half court. And so 
uh, in those two specific games, just finding, you know, moving forward, finding ways where we can make each other better, get more assisted baskets, uh, put more pressure on the rim and get fouled, I think will be areas that we can grow and get better. Um, but yeah, you know, I think we really fixed a couple of the issues in those first two losses. And then against these really, really good opponents, West Virginia, I think they're number eight in the net. UConn number one in the net, you know, we're going to have to find a way uh, to really score in the half court and be able to execute. And so now we know what we're up against. I feel like we've had, you know, some really good opportunities to play some of the top level competition across the country. And in turn, that'll prepare us for the SEC play. And some of the individual parts of this team, one player that stood out to me early on, that's Will Richard and how consistent he's been for the most part through the first 11 games of the year. What a find he was out of the transfer portal, right, coach? Yeah, you know what? He's a, he's a great young man, first of all, and he's really the type of, of student athlete that we are trying to build this program with. You know, he's a guy that I consider to be a gator, great attitude, works really hard, comes from a great family and really wanted to be here. And that's something that was really important to us. And I'm really impressed and, and pleased with the way he's translated as a sophomore. And some of the other pieces, you know, Colin Castleton obviously is a leader on and off the floor. Uh, getting him back for that fifth year, what were those conversations like and just how much has he meant to this team? Yeah, you know, the, the reality is every good team generally is pretty old and, and has some really good pieces at the center spot in the point guard position. So when Colin, uh, when we got down here and Colin, you know, was, was leaning towards going pro, it was, it was a priority for us as a staff to try to, to get him back in just so we could have a foundational piece as we got going in year one and uh, really pleased. You know, obviously he's, uh, you know, he's had a good year to this point and he's also graduating this weekend, which we're really excited about. A great milestone for him and his family and uh, just pleased to have him with our program. Yeah, so there's a lot to be excited about through 11 games. Gators off to a 7-4 and four start. Coming up here on the show on Florida Basketball, we'll take a look at the replays of the game, recap of the season up until this point. With highlights, we'll go inside Gator Basketball, and we'll dive into that decision for Colin Castleton to come back for a fifth year. Plus, we'll preview what's ahead for the Gators, the Jumpman Invitational, plus the start of SEC play. We'll do that with Coach a little bit later on on the show. With that, the show rolls on right after this. Conversation with Coach Golden was brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore Toyota.com today. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places. Florida Basketball with Todd Golden, presented by your local Toyota dealers, is brought to you by Florida Dairy Farmers, UF Health, Wells Fargo, Pepsi, and your local Toyota dealers. This is Florida Basketball with Todd Golden, presented by your local Toyota dealers. Okay, let's do this. Florida and Stony Brook, the season opener for both the dawn of the Todd Golden era. Swing, swing, corner left three. Reeves drops it in. That's how this one starts. Turning the corner, driving Stevenson Moore, trying to punch it, blocked at the rim by Castleton. Early to deflect another pass to the foul line. It's a foot race to the other end. Castleton winds up, dunks it with two hands. Nice pass down low. Felder catches, dunks with two hands. Back to Riley for three up top. Bottom. Head to Lofton. Pushes with the left hand to Fudge. Little shimmy shake. Rises angle left for three. Good. Knock that down. Left baseline, spins with the right hook, and knocks it down. That's big league two right there. That's some good footwork. Block, here's Fitz Morris. Castleton blocked him earlier, and he did it again. Richard, wing left three. Bang, got that. Shot clock at four, decision time. Wing right for Richard for three. There it is. Time to pull the chili down the left slot. Bottled up by Lane. What a job. And his release pass stolen by Reeves with five on the shot clock. Ahead to Jones, lob the rim. Hell, you dunk. Code down by Castleton. Bounce pass left corner. Klasky for three. Bottom, got it. That made my night right there, Sean. May wants it at the near high post. Turns, goes down the lane, shoots. No, got his own rebound. Back up and in. Second chance bucket. And Jack May has his first bucket as a Gator. What a fun way to start the new season and the Todd Golden era. Often long pass will right, caught by Reeves. Drives baseline, leads for a diving filter. Catch and a wind up and a two-hand dunk to finish the possession. Castleton catches, shoots the mid-range wing right. That's pretty. Here comes Castleton. He'll slip it just a bit. Catches the foul line. Climbs, trap it inside, and banked it in off the window. And Reeves down the right slot. Rises and dunks with the right hand. Yo! Castleton backs it down below the right elbow. Throws out of a double ball tip, but caught by Reeves. In the corner, locked in for three. Bottom. 
Lofton buries the quarter left three. Richard throws wing left. Jones into the low post. Castle to block left. Spins drive and dumps it home with the right hand. Castleton all by himself on the right slot, runs it up and in. New career high for Colin Castleton. Drives across the big, across the lane, shot blocked. Kept alive by the Gators. To Reeves, angle right three. Bang, got it. There it is. Florida 88, Kennesaw State 78. Clear by the Gators. Lofton racing up the left sideline. Hits a trailing of Reeves, three on the way. Bang, got it. Pick and pop, Castleton off the catch for a three. Yes, sir, there it is. The first career three for Colin Castleton. Right hand dribble, wiggles around the Rosado screen, cross the lane, left to right. And swatted out of there by Jatobo. Loose ball goes out of bounds, belongs to Florida along the right baseline. Sets up Rosado, top of the arc, hand it off, turn the corner. Boy down the left side of the lane, layup blocked by Castleton. Up the left side of the floor to Lofton. Lob for the rim. Alley you dunk cone down by Fudge. Yo. Kugel fires in the corner left. Lofton for three. Guard the line drive is drilled with four on the shot clock. Throws out corner right. Three on the way. Good, good, good. For Reeves. Corner left three. Another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to back threes for Reeves. Do this, Gators and Seminoles tonight. Then angle right for three. Off the rim, no good. Dunk followed by. Castleton, timeout Florida, needed it in a bad, bad way. It's a 7-0 run right now for Florida State over the last minute and a half. You start to see that we're feeling the pressure. We've got to stay composed here. Inside, Richard spins to the rim, and finally one goes in at the cup for the Gators. Often bounce pass, turned it over. He was trying to hit the rolling Jatobo. Ball got nine loose. Jatobo goes down, grabs it, and throws to Castleton, trailing the play. Turns it, dunks it with two hands. Fires for three. Bottom. Got it. There we go. Let's knock down another one. All the way to the rack, lays it up and in. Gators are blitzing the Knolls here at the start of the second half. They've cut it to 10. What a glide and finish by Colin Castleton. Castleton will keep. Shoots off the glass and in. Foul on the play. Counted in a possible three-point opportunity for Colin Castleton. Lofton on the dribble, left sideline. Puts his head down, drives the lane, dumps underneath. Somehow got to Castleton. Spins, shoots, scores with the right hook at the cup. The Gators have pulled it within one. Bottom, lob for the rim, deflected on its way to the cup. Caught the underneath by Castleton, who jumps you with two hands and stares down for it. Everything's going your way now. Bunch drives, goes to the cup. Bunched it with the right hand. Power dunk by Alex Fudge. A W for the Gators here at Florida State. Replays of the game was brought to you by Florida Dairy Farmers, proud partner of the Florida Gators for over 35 years. Racing to the other end, up and under, layup is good. Google in the lane, contact, shoots and scores the runner. Jones off the dribble, shoots for three and knocked it down. Richard for three, there it is. Here's bottom angle right three, banked it in. Richard will hit a rolling felder going to the rack, dunks it with two hands. This is Florida Basketball with Todd Golden, presented by your local Toyota dealers. Electing to come back for a fifth year of college basketball, all SEC performer Colin Castleton is a difference maker for the Gators. A product of the state of Florida, Castleton had a growth spurt in high school and developed his game. It's fair to say he had various options at the college level. Junior year, summer, um, I was playing on the AU circuit with uh, like an EYBL team, which is the Nike brand. And then I started getting like smaller schools were offering me and like um, lower level schools. And then like that summer towards the end, like July of 2017, like a bunch of big schools started offering me. And I was like, all right, well, this can be really serious. And like, since I'm a Florida kid, I always like had Florida in the back of my mind in high school. And then, you know, like things obviously didn't work out in high school, but when I transferred, I was obviously given the opportunity, so I just didn't turn it down. Castleton's roots in Florida run deep, and getting to come back to the Sunshine State and wear the Gator logo was an exciting next step in his college journey. A good amount of my family is from Florida. I was born in Florida, um, lived here for like, basically my whole life besides while I was at Michigan and then like a small like year or two while I was in Georgia when I was younger. but. Yeah, I've lived in Florida basically my whole life. Everybody knows here, so being able just to represent that is like everything to me. Like it means a lot, and um, like every day I think about it, it, just like I said, it gives me goosebumps, and like um, I just take a lot of pride in that. You know, being able to just represent like where I'm from. 
Cullen has made his mark in Gainesville, and this offseason had visions to play professionally after last year. His decision to return for one final season in orange and blue became more certain after conversations with head coach Todd Golden. Things were going quickly. I was actually like starting to prepare for like the draft and getting ready for the next level. And then, you know, things just happened really quickly with Coach Golden getting the job. And then, you know, he kind of re-recruited me and started talking to me and my family, you know, met with me a couple times, met with my parents. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just couldn't turn it down. I talked to him about what he, you know, the vision he saw for me this year, um, the plans he had for this season, even though it was his first year and he's younger, but, you know, he has a chip on his shoulder and that's things that me and him talk about all the time. Early to deflects another pass to the foul line. It's a foot race to the other end. Castleton winds up, dunks it with two hands. Castleton all by himself on the right slot, runs it up and in. New career high for Colin Castleton. On the court, the Gators have a tandem that's one of the most experienced in the SEC. Along with Castleton, new transfer point guard Kyle Lofton has helped make things even easier on the floor for the big man. Every point guard wants to play with a good big, and every big wants to play with a good point guard. So I think what he does definitely fits in with me. Probably he can do it all. Um, to everybody that can shoot three now. Being what he is can open the floor up for me. Like He's going to gain a lot of attention. That would just be, be even better for me. Associate head coach Corey McRae, having coached against Castleton in his prior stop at Mississippi State, is elated to now be on the same side. Colin puts, as an uh, opposing coach, he puts fear in my heart. And so I'm thankful that, I'm, uh, that he's on my team. He's so gifted, he's, uh, he's skilled around the basket, he can make an open three, he can uh, protect the rim, he's a shot blocker, and he knows what to expect in this league. He's a veteran. And so I, I'm very excited to be coaching uh, with uh, Colin Castleton and Omar team. Castleton's drive to get better never ends. His work rate to gain improvement, whether on the court or watching film, is second to none. Watching film is definitely like a big part of what I do because I just feel like it's, it's the only way to get better is being able to see yourself, you know, make mistakes and just fix that in the gym. For Inside Gator Basketball, I'm Kyle Crooks. Inside Gators Basketball was brought to you by Wells Fargo, the official retail bank of the Florida Gators. Lofton around the high middle screen, down the right slot. He's going to the rack too. Kisses it off the window and gets his second field goal of the game. Bottom deep, three off the left angle. That is money. Shot blocked by Colin Castleton. Richard, bang with a wing left three. Pick and pop, Castleton off the catch for a three. Yes, sir, there it is. The first career three for Colin Castleton. Catching a two-hand dunk for Kowasi Reeves. I'd like to thank these major sponsors who make this show possible. UF Health, Wells Fargo, Pepsi, Florida Dairy Farmers, and your local Toyota dealers. Welcome back to Florida Basketball with the coach, Todd Golden. Well, coach, obviously, Colin means so much to this team. We saw that feature on Inside Gator Basketball. But moving ahead and how important he's going to have to be for these games coming up, the Jumpman Invitational, really fun event, all the Jordan brand schools in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're a Gator fan in the Carolina area, make sure you come out and uh, see the Gators. But that's going to be a tough test to end non-conference play. Yeah, a great one for us, right? You know, we talked about earlier how, you know, we've had some really challenging games. You know, three of our four losses are – against teams that are in the top 11 of the net. And uh, Oklahoma was another really good one. You know, a team that pushed Arkansas to the brink last week. Uh, a great neutral site opportunity for us, which what I assume would be a quad one game at the end of the year. And uh, just a great way for us to end this segment of our non-conference. Obviously, we have that Kansas State game in the middle of conference play. Uh, but if we can find a way to get this thing done, I think we could say it was a successful preseason. And before you know it, start of SEC play. And for you, it's going to be a homecoming of sorts. <laughs> you start out, what a way to, to kick off your, your tenure as Gator head coach in the SEC, go up against Bruce Pearl in the jungle. That's going to be pretty tough, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's funny. You know, back in my, my old spot at San Francisco, we always seem to open up against St. Mary's, you know, my, <laughs> where I played against Randy Bennett. And uh, coming out here down to the south in, in the SEC, and now, of course, we're going to Auburn to open up. Uh, wouldn't expect it any other way, but really excited, you know, to get to go back there and see a lot of the people 
uh, that we kind of built the foundation of that program with. And again, just a, an awesome opportunity being in there, being in the jungle, definite quad one game and a chance for us to really start conference playoff on the right foot. Do you talk to your team about flipping that switch from non-conference to conference play or is it because you played so many tough opponents here in the non-conference, they're already geared up for conference play? Yeah, I, again, I think that's the, the, the silver lining of some of these tough losses we've taken is like we're, we're prepared. You know, we've seen what some of the best teams in the country look like. We're not going in there, you know, un, unprepared and not being able to play with them on the same floor. So uh, in, a, in a way, it's just another game. Obviously, the stakes are raised being in conference play. Uh, but it, it, I think our guys will, will feel comfortable in that moment. Well, Coach, uh, appreciate the time. A lot of fun events coming up, of course. The start of SEC play right around the corner with the Jumpman Invitational mm -hmm. in Charlotte. So good luck. Thank you very much. Good to be here, man. All right, that's Gator head coach Todd Golden. That wraps up our show, our first of the regular season. We invite you to join us for future episodes of Florida Basketball with the coach starting in January. For our entire crew on site, I'm Kyle Crooks saying so long for now. As always, go Gators. This was a presentation of Learfield. Bally Sports Florida and Gator Vision.